Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and even though the Game Developer Conference unfortunately did not happen this year due to that which shall not be named, uh, we are getting a lot of the announcements that would have come out at uh, the conference uh, slowly over time, including a couple this week from NVIDIA that we are talking about today. Now earlier in the week I talked about their new uh, texturing tool, but today we're talking about two other new SDKs that NVIDIA announced, of varying degrees of interest to people I am sure. The first one is RTX Global Illumination. Uh, this one is basically ray tracing. This is a SDK for doing global illumination calculations using RTX hardware. Although this isn't limited to just RTX hardware, this is technically DXR or DirectX ray tracing hardware of which AMD drivers supposedly support it now and the next generation of AMD will support DXR 1.1 anyways. So this isn't an NVIDIA only technology, at least going forward it isn't. So what exactly is this all about? Well this is for calculating global illumination. Global illuminations are things like um, calculating multi-bounce indirect lighting so you can have lighting coming off of like a computer monitor or a light source hits a shiny surface. Well that shiny surface should in fact reflect a bit more light as well. And that's what global illumination is all about. Well, the cool thing here is you don't have to bake this and it shouldn't be that expensive from a frame rate cost. And you kind of see no RTX with RTX. And for some stupid reason, they dim this graphic when you put your mouse over it. I don't understand that, but we can see the difference between the two. So full RTX, RTX off. And what you're really going to see is like, look at this metal surface right here and look at the monitor as I come back across. So as we go past the metal, you see you're getting like that sheen and shine because that metal is now the, the light from these monitors are, are actually affecting the color of the surface. So see here the SH, it's got a yellowish color and then boom. So the, this light would have never hit it before. So that's kind of where global illumination comes in. You're also getting, you know, more light off these monitors and these floors would also be, since they were a metal reflective surface, would be affecting the light in the scene as well. So that's the whole idea behind global illumination. Obviously RTX is Nvidia's branding for their new GPUs. The 2060, 2070, and 2080 are all RTX cards, although they have since backported support for DXR to a limited degree to last generation's model. So if you've got a 970 or 980 or one of the bridge cards like a 1650 or 1660 you can support DXR to a certain degree you're not going to get the performance for sure but you, you can perform it uh, so here you can see from this um, SDK you can get full source code uh, providing source code so you can easily integrate RTX GI into your tools and customize it to your specific needs so if you so wanted, you could have it integrated into the Godot game engine, or if you're running your own game engine, you could do it that way. Now, what about Unreal or Unity? Well, we'll get to that in a second. So also see here, you don't have to do baking. Now, baking of lights can take quite a bit of time. So you can dramatically, dramatically speed up iterations with real-time ray trace lighting. No more obsessing over light probe positions, no light or shadow leaking. Uh, any DXR GPU, so it runs on a broad range of platforms. All DXR enabled GPUs are supported, including again, the GTX 1080 series. So that's the last, sorry, I said nine. I meant the 1080, 1070, 1060. It backported to support those as well. Uh, also the bridge one, 1650, 16, and obviously the 2070, 2060, and 2080 are supported as well. But do keep in mind, DXR support for AMD uh, does exist, and in the next generation is going to be the norm as well. So this isn't NVIDIA only. And it's tuned and optimized, uh, performance optimized to fit a 60 hertz frame budget. So you can run this guy at 60 frames per second results. Uh, infinite bouncing of lights in real time. Uh, we kind of covered a little bit of what that meant before. Uh, content creation at the speed of light, because once again, you don't need to deal with, uh, you know, setting up light probes in your scene and then checking to see how it looks when you bake your lighting out and so on. Uh, this just works, so you, you don't have to go through that step anymore. And uh, a scalable solution for all. So once again, they're, they're only mentioning their own cards, but basically any DXR or DirectX rendering capable hardware should be able to work with this guy. They do get into a couple details about how this guy actually works. Um, so, you know, you author your scene, you place volume probes in the world, blah, 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 blah. Um, and yeah, we're not going to get into that one. There is a presentation deck if you want to get into a lot more detail. I'm going to be skimming over that because I am actually covering, once again, two SDKs in this video and not just one. But if you're interested, uh, there's a couple of cool things, and then I'm going to finish this off with kind of a bad thing. So we got a bit of a, a rundown, mostly kind of covers what we were talking about earlier on. But here you can see they are working closely with Epic Games and Unity to bring RTX GI to their engine as soon as possible. Now, the interesting thing is uh, Unity just recently booted their uh, light mapping solution to the curb and are developing their own in-house. So it'll be interesting to see how something like RTX GI mixes and mashes in with that. And now the bad news. To get this guy, and I don't really understand it, we'll head on over here, uh, you have to actually submit a, a form so you can get it on 
So your submission needs to be approved before you can grab it. So you need to tell um, them uh, you know, why you want to use RTX GI, uh, and then they'll approve you and give you access to the repository on GitHub or not. So that's a little irritating, but that is one of the requirements. You can see here a couple more details are being shown. In order to use this guy, you are on Windows only. You need to have the Windows 10 SDK, so basically a very current version. You're also going to have to have quite up-to-date drivers, and this what they're saying is, uh, actually just Pascal and newer cards, uh, new display drivers installed. CMake uh, 3.15 needs to be installed and then Visual Studio 2017 or 2019 as well as the DXR 1.0 ray tracing API. I believe 1.1, .1, oh, it's not available yet, but it's going to be available very, very shortly, I believe. So unfortunately, if you do want to tech, check out RTX GI and you don't want to wait for Unity or... Um, you know, uh, Unreal Engine to actually have a released version of it, you need to go through this application process. And then locking this away is kind of irritating because um, we, first off, I don't know what the license is. And second, this makes kind of integrating it into something like the Godot game engine. Well, Godot is not going to implement a, a closed library, even an open source, but closed library. So if it's not something like MIT or, um, you know, not GPL, but MIT or Zlib or those kind of libraries, it's a very limited use to a lot of the open source game engines out there. So it'll be interesting to see how that all turns out. They might have it kind of in this kind of preview thing only because it's brand new, but that part is a little disappointing. All right, so now we're on to SDK number two. And this one, I am going to have a nightmare of a time disclaiming to you because it's very, very confusing. And this is DLSS 2.0. Now they actually have just released a couple of games with DLSS 2.0. Uh, over the last couple days. So if you've been watching like mainstream gaming news, it, this is like a miracle technology basically is how it's being sold. And people are getting a 30 to 40% CPU boost as a result of DLSS 2.0. So, what is DLSS 2.0? Well, that stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. It's an RTX technology, again, that uses the power of deep learning and AI to boost frame rates while generating beautiful, sharp images for your game. Okay, so the way I best understand this, and what they do is basically send it to Skynet. So Skynet gets your game, renders some frames, and then it figures out, renders many, 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 many frames. Okay, this is a terrible definition of it, but they send it off to a supercomputer. Skynet calculates how great your a thing would look at the very best quality. So you see, Beautiful image, um, tens of thousands, high resolution, beautiful images rendered offline. So this isn't real time in any way. This might take days or hours, who knows, even on a supercomputer, uh, because they're rendering them at, you know, maybe 64,000 by 64,000 resolution. Super, super high resolution, uh, 64 samples per pixel. And then taking all of those frames they render, they kind of can figure out how to use these super high res to take uh, a low res image, so say like a 720p or something, and scale it up to something like 1080p using DLSS. So that means that your computer would like, and so that part is downloaded. So that part, once they've done all the calculations on the supercomputer, that little bit is sent down to your computer, like the, the, the Cliff Notes or the Coles Notes version of, here's how you make a frame, and here's how we figured out how to make this game look great on a supercomputer. Now here's how you can have your own tensor cores do the same thing. Again, probably a terrible layman's version of it, but then you can do, um, you can render at a lower resolution and then deep learning super sampling will actually be able to scale it up so it looks as good as 4K native. Now I've actually heard that some people are saying that there's some artifacting in games so it may not be a flawless technology and to my understanding DLSS version 1.0 kind of sucked. But that's the idea here. Basically you train a supercomputer how to make low res images so to, it makes super super high resolution images you take it and then it takes those instructions that it learns basically the output from what it learns and then your RTX cores on your machine use that to then do the same thing on your machine. Um, so you got a couple different options. Superior image quality, uh, image quality, so compared to native resolution while rendering only one quarter to one half of the pixels. So there you get the bottleneck. 4K pixels is a, a, a hell of a lot more than it is at, say, uh, 1080p. So if you can render it to something like 1080p and then scale it up to 4K and have it look as good as 4K, you just really offloaded the amount of work that your uh, GPUs have to do. So you're kind of getting 4K-ish performance out of uh, you know, a 1080p level workload. At least that's the theory. Uh, scales across all their GPUs. So I guess I should say all their RTX GPUs. That would be a 2060, a 2070, a 2080, at least as of this video. Uh, so improves frame rates, eliminates previous limitations on GPU settings and resolutions could be eliminated. So you could potentially render, um, 
using graphical settings that were kind of beyond the horsepower of your, say, your 2060, so you might be able to get, say, real-time ray tracing type performance out of a 2060 where you couldn't get it in the past. Um, the original DLSS re required the trained AI network for each new game, trains using non-game specific content, delivering a generalized network that works across games. This means faster game integrations and ultimately more DLSS games. What does that mean? I don't know, that part sounds like magic. So before you used to have to train the network on a specific game, now you don't have to. These, these trainings are gonna be pushed out via the drivers to, I, I don't really know specifically how that part is going to work, but DSL, DLSS offers three image quality modes, quality, balanced, and performance that controls the game's internal rendering resolution. Now, we've already seen this a little bit in some games where you've got, you know, an internal render resolution, you know, 70% or 80% or whatever, and then it scales the rest up. This is kind of the same thing in a way. It's just... Uh, led by machine learning in theory. Uh, so you got quality, balanced, and performance. That controls the game's internal rendering resolution with performance mode enabling up to a four times resolution boost as in 1080p goes up to 4K. This means more user choice and even bigger performance boosts. Uh, and as of right now, if you wanna actually check this out, it's available in Unreal Engine 4 code base only right now. So they've got a custom branch of Unreal Engine 4 with DLSS enabled. So the games you could see out there right now, things like Control and Mech Warrior 5, obviously they're Unreal Engine games. There's four or five games that have DLSS enabled right now. And here you can see one of them, obviously Wolfenstein Youngblood. They go from uh, 1440p RT on an RTX 2060 uh, with the quality mode on and off. You can see here 85 frames versus 117 frames. Theoretically, I think they're mostly just showing you that it looks comparable. I don't think there's a huge difference in the image quality, but you do see here, you're looking at you know almost 50% more frames. And they, they kind of showcase the same thing for um, Mech Warrior and other things as well. Now, if you're interested in grabbing this guy, as I mentioned earlier on, this one is Unreal Engine 4 only. And the downside is you also have to apply for this one. So I don't know what, what this gatekeeping that NVIDIA are all about right now. So if you wanna grab it, basically you have to hook up your GitHub account. You have to build from custom source. So there's an NVIDIA UTX, uh, sorry, RTX UE4 branch available out there. And you think, okay, well, that's the extent of it, but there's actually a couple of files that you need to get from um, NVIDIA themselves before your game runs. So you gotta download this custom branch. But then once you've done that, here you are. So this is the RTX branch of Unreal Engine, and it's available right here. You could go ahead and clone this yourself, uh, and, and you know it is open. Um, the challenge is then again, once you get going, uh, you're going to need to get um, DLSS registry files from your NVIDIA contact and install them. Now in this case, it may make sense because they might still be. You know there is that supercomputer side of the equation that is doing some calculations. So you may have had to have registered your game so that it could do the calculations or whatever, but do know that if you actually want to check out DLSS as a developer, you need to have a developer account, you probably need to register your game with NVIDIA, and you need to be using Unreal Engine 4. So obviously this isn't for everyone as of yet, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this technology if, you know, if it really is a magical 40 extra or 40% more frames per second, it's going to catch on. So it'd be interesting to see where this goes, but all the details of it are here. I will link this in the linked article down below. So if you wanna learn more about um, either the RTX Global Illumination SDK or the uh, deep learning uh, library that we've got right here, um, I will link articles to both of those down below. And uh, I'd be interested in hearing what you have to say about this. Have you tried a game yet with DLSS? Um, and if so, did you get a magical 40 to 50% boost in um, frame rate and uh, yeah let me know what you think let me know what you think of the global illumination library as well and that is it i'll talk to you all later goodbye